morning, everyone. Um, I, uh, I'm going to talk about the AI-driven enterprise. And um, some of what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick at and dive a little bit into some of those areas that Steve had, had touched on just a minute ago. Um, and um, I, I really want to talk about um, the, a few different aspects of this. So I have a theory. And that, that theory is that the current wave of artificial intelligence is going to hit a peak inside of the enterprise. But when it does, it's not going to be a monumental revolution of technology, but rather a monumental revolution of people. And what I'd like to do now is explore this a little bit with you with the aid of uh, some, some data and some research. So let's start with where we've been, 70 years. We've been looking at artificial intelligence for 70 years. And during that time, we've had three AI winters, a data explosion, and as you've heard this morning, and we all know, a ton of Moore's Law. But AI stayed in academia for so long that very often when we talk about artificial intelligence, we talk about it by its techniques. We talk about machine learning. We talk about so many layers of neurons in a neural net that we can't even really explain them. We talk about deep learning. We spend so much time talking about the techniques of artificial intelligence that we miss the opportunity to focus on what's really important, which is the practical application of artificial intelligence. And this is a problem. It's a problem because for over 50 years, the application of artificial intelligence has been limited. And it's been limited to things like, can machines beat humans in games? You know, we saw chess, Go, Jeopardy. Data scientists call this type of artificial intelligence narrow, narrow AI. And whether you call it narrow or you call it limited, AI is not just about games and playing games and teaching computers to beat us at games. And it's also not just hype. In the past five years, the web companies predominantly have found ways to give AI meaning, an application beyond the limited areas of AI, beyond the techniques. The combination of digital data with machine learning is, is where we got personalization. And personalization is really what has fundamentally transformed our customer journeys. This experience originated in the digital world and is now in the physical world brought to us mostly by scrappy AI startups in China and Amazon in the US. And this combination of these two areas, the online to the offline world, is, is what we refer to as the first wave, the first wave called O2O, online to offline. Deep learning techniques in the form of uh, convolutional neural nets or uh, recurrent neural nets are, are the eyes and ears of, of this AI, the AI that comes in the second wave, which is perception. Perception AI provides the necessary bridge between the online world and the offline world. It's the merging of the two. The majority of today's cognitive services or packaged AI, this is, this is the wave that they're in. They're in the perception wave. We experience this type of, this wave of AI when we ask digital questions of our digital devices, like our Siri or our Alexa or our Google Home. We also see it in places like Amazon Go stores or in Kroger stores that have been enabled by Microsoft AI. But perception isn't enough. In fact, what really gets the digital experience true in, in bringing the digital world into the physical world is when we combine the perception wave of AI with automation. In the Amazon Go example, this is where we, we see the automation in purchasing and in checkouts, right? That's, that's where we experience the automation portion. And when automation meets perception, that's where we get to this third wave, the autonomous wave. And we, we look at the autonomous wave, and, and it's very easy, as Peter mentioned, to look at things like autonomous cars. But we also should be thinking about autonomous production lines, autonomous supply chain. But this wave is also where we have the most, that, that, that drives the most topic, that drives the most strife and fear. We even had a question on it this morning in Peter's discussion. This wave is often all too synonymous with labor erosion. 
Yet what's interesting is, to date, this wave has generated net new jobs. And if you look at even the most recent research, it's going to generate more jobs than lose jobs for the next 25 years. And that brings us to the fourth wave. And this is the wave of business. And the opportunity to aggregate these three prior waves together and capitalize on the sum of all of the learnings in these waves and the techniques within these waves and really bring the potential of AI into the enterprise. And it's where we see the most amazing ability for us to capitalize on bringing it in. Most importantly, the enterprise is the, the perfect environment to do this. It's the ultimate petri dish, if you will, on how we can combine the power of human intelligence, organic intelligence, with machine intelligence. Steve mentioned these three things when he was speaking a minute ago. The combination or the, the convergence of automation, of analytics, and of artificial intelligence together. It's something that the analyst firm HFS calls the trifecta. And the current state of, of AI enterprise is best expressed in how organizations are currently focusing on each one of these three areas and where the value is getting generated as these three come together. That's where the real value is getting generated today. That convergence is, is building a tremendous amount of momentum. And that momentum is really important because right now the current state of AI is anything but, uh, is anything but transformational in our organizations. The, the six boxes that you see behind me here are the current highest um, uh, areas of investment and action in organizations today when it comes to artificial intelligence. And these use cases certainly generate a lot of ROI for the organizations that are using them. Most cases, this is where most organizations have started their AI journey. And in most cases, it's where organizations still are today. Another interesting data point can be found in this chart. This shows AI investments in relation to ROI by industry. And as you can see, there's a lot of really big industries in that bottom quadrant. And a lot of that is because they are held back by regulation or their inability to use data for a competitive advantage. Others like life sciences and healthcare have such long life cycles to capitalize on the investments they're making in AI to get to ROI that it's just taking them a long time to realize the benefits. The benefits that are, uh, Steve mentioned this just a minute ago, and I think it, it, it bears another, uh, another look, which is if you look at our recent, uh, our recent AI survey, the difference between the AI leaders and the AI laggards in the top 100 enterprises in the US in terms of revenue separate their investments by a factor of 10. But what I find more interesting is that we expect this to get to a factor of 50 in the next three years. So how do, we, how do you rationalize that? How do you rationalize that situation? Does the supply side of AI, the AI companies, the AI service companies, the tech companies, do they know something we don't? Do they have a better vision than we do? Data seems to suggest something different as the C-suite across enterprises agree that competitive advantage is going to be achieved only if you're interjecting AI into your enterprise. Only if you're able to capitalize on these investments will they come true. What else is different? Well, we asked CIOs around the world, and they consistently told us that they are using AI in the form of machine learning in their enterprises. 89% of them said that they were. Yet 40% of them said, we're still trying to figure out how to get AI out of the lab and into production. And when Peter was talking about, about some of the, the, the contests that, that were funded, I, I couldn't help but think about this statistic. I couldn't help but think about, so there's a real experiment that's happened that allows us to take water out of the air. There's a real experiment that's happened that has given us a way to rapidly increase the way that children around the world can learn. But to me, those are experiments, successful experiments. My question is, 
how do you take them out of the lab and move them into production? How do you take that experiment that drew water successfully out of the air and revolutionize the way that we give water to places around the world that don't have access to it? And this is the same thing that a lot of organizations are struggling with. As we looked at this, only 3% of the enterprises said that they're using machine learning or other types of artificial intelligence across their enterprise in anything but a departmental level. The rest of the enterprises are stuck somewhere on this journey. And in fact, most of them are stuck in trying to get repeatable value out of individual use cases. When we looked at this, the gap between those that were just starting and those that had transformed also showed a few other things. Many of them didn't have robust AI platforms. They hadn't built solid integration to modern day DevOps. And they didn't have operating models agile enough to support rapid experimentation. That experimentation that would be the lab experiments that could be productionalized. When we talk about that gap, though, it's easy to focus on the technology. It's easy to focus on the technology processes. But that's only a piece of what separates this 3% from the rest of the, the, from the, rest of, of the journey. The, the, the real element, the one that's making the biggest difference, is the human element. AI-driven enterprises strive to deliver epic experiences. So we've got, on one side, customer obsession and the ability to bring significant change into the customer journey, epic experiences in the customer space. On the other side, we have the empowerment of the workforce and an opportunity to provide an epic experience for workforces, an opportunity to bring such an epic change in the way that our workforces work that a lot of what they do can free up capacity in order to be creative, in order to bring more judgment into the work that they do, because the capacity has been freed. Epic experiences for our customers is something that a lot of us have been focusing on, and it's what we've seen a lot in the big tech companies and the 3% that have brought forward real transformational AI. It's been focused on the customer space. And this peak that I talk about is really about creating the epic experiences for our employees, for our workforce. AI-driven enterprises also know where and when to use AI. They have a sort of uh, AI compass that helps point them in the right direction. It's the direction that helps them bring explainability to their AI. And explainability is a big topic today especially in academia. And um, the picture I have in the back here is um, of uh, Joy, I'm going to murder her name, Blumami. And she's an MIT professor, uh, MIT researcher, and an outspoken um, spokesperson against algorithmic bias. And Joy did a very popular TED Talk in which she examined an experiment that she had conducted using some very sophisticated available AI techniques um, for computer vision. And the experiment, in the experiment, she was not able to consistently teach the AI to identify her face, but she could get the AI to detect a white mask. So we're left with the question, is it really machine learning or is it machine training? And you know, there's, there's been some recent advancements to the referenced AI here from our, our friends at Microsoft and our friends at Google. But algorithmic bias still remains a real problem. And leading organizations, AI-driven organizations, that 3% and the ones on the journey up to that 3% are building that AI compass in a way that it is grounded in human judgment to remove things like algorithmic bias, to point the compass in the right direction, the ethical direction. The human component of all of this is most evident in the workforce itself. And another thing that these 3% know 
Another thing that the real AI-driven enterprise knows is that having strong data scientists and having strong engineers is great. Definitely, definitely needed, whether, whether you, you, you build that capability yourself or you're using somebody else for it, having that is important, but it is not the entire equation. The entire equation for transformation doesn't happen until you're transforming your entire workforce. And this means monumental change and therefore monumental change management. It requires new ownership. It requires new operating models. It requires the fostering of new types of data. And it requires the democratization of technology and knowledge across the entire enterprise, not just in the pockets of these data scientists and these engineers, not just in the pockets of innovation. At last, I need to talk about data. I know, we all have to talk about data. There's no conversation on AI that, that is absent of a conversation on data. Um, Enterprises are rich with data, powerful data, tons and loads of structured data. A lot of organizations have even found ways to tap into unstructured data, to exogenous, external data. They've built capacity. They've, they've acquired compute power. The supply side of data is really rich and getting richer. But for all of the efforts on the supply side, the demand side is a little bit unfulfilled. And the, the, the ability to bridge the gap between what's available and what's useful is still somewhat elusive. The AI-driven enterprise, that 3%, is finding ways to make the supply side of data available and efficient. But more aptly, they're making the data consumption side available. They're mastering the consumption side. They're mastering the ability to bring the human machines able to collaborate with the real machines. They're matching the supply side with the consumption side, with the demand side. So in summary, let me say that my point of view is that the business wave of AI, the wave that we are in right now, has the potential to arguably be the most impactful technology in all of our organization's histories. As much as we see AI prevalent today in society and in the consumer space, we will see it as equally impactful inside of our enterprises, inside of the businesses that we operate in, and as impactful. But most importantly, AI-driven enterprises are those that will thrive on the people. They are those that will thrive on making a point to drive value out of the combination of organic human intelligence with the computer intelligence. And hopefully, they're going to do so by having AI compasses that point not just at where the right places to use AI are, but also to do so ethically. Thank you for your time.